Exodus 14. And in this passage, what we're going to look at and see is a story about how God works in the life of his people. How God works in the lives of his people. You know, the story of the Israelites is such that when Father Jacob and his whole household were experiencing a famine, Joseph, one of his sons who had been living in Egypt at the time because he had been sold into slavery and the Lord's hand was upon Joseph, and lifted him up to be second in command of all of Egypt. And at the point of the famine, Joseph's brothers, who were Jacob's sons, found out about the grain and the resources that Joseph had accumulated because God had spoken to him and given him wisdom and the foreknowledge to help Egypt through that crisis. In fact, they helped the whole world through a global famine crisis. So all of the sons of Jacob moved up to a place in, in Egypt, in northern Africa, called Goshen. Everybody say Goshen. And it was there in Goshen that the Israelites began to flourish and multiply. And they said, well, we might as well not go anywhere else because we have lush green pastures for our flocks. We're taken care of because our brother is second in command of all of Egypt. And so goes the story that the Israelites flourished and multiplied and grew there in great number. Until the next Pharaoh or king of Egypt, who did not know Joseph, did not know his family, saw this great people who are not part of the Egyptian people and said, we need to bring these people into captivity. They began to oppress the Israelites and they, they took them forcefully into servitude or slavery. And for 400 years, somebody say 400 for 400 years, 400 años, los israelitas fueron esclavos en Egipto. I'm mixing in some Spanish because we have some Spanish brothers and sisters here that were a part of the baby dedication. So don't mind me if I just go back and forth. Is that okay? Está bien? All right. And if you don't speak Spanish or understand Spanish, just... Imagine if we were able to do the same in your native tongue, whether that be Samoan or Tagalog. We got we to gotta ask God to continue to bring more of a multicultural pastoral staff too, right? So that we can reflect Los Angeles and the kingdom of heaven. So Israel became a mighty people. After 400 years of being in slavery, they forgot. They had forgotten about their identity. Olvidaron de su identidad. When we think of our lives, none of us are going to live for 400 years unless God changes something. But what we're not doing today is looking at the specifics of us living for 400 years or Mission Ebenezer for 400 years. But spiritually speaking, if you look at the people of Israel, see, si vemos a, a, al pueblo de Israel, Podemos ver que ellos pasaron a través de diferentes temporadas. They went through different seasons, diferentes tiempos en la vida. They went through different times of life. They evolved. They were a, a prosperous people. Hurt by famine. Experiencing prosperity. Then going into slavery. You know, in our lives, if you break up the seasons... The mountains, the valleys of our lives, you will see that we also experience spiritually different seasons and different times in our lives. Nosotros vamos a experimentar diferentes temporadas en la vida espiritualmente. Sometimes we go through a season of divorce, layoffs, setbacks, sickness, injury, family issues, problems in the marriage, struggles in life. And all of these moments in our lives, cada momento en nuestra vida brings upon us 
different challenges. Nos traen diferentes retos en la vida. Different challenges. And God wants to make sure that we can recognize those challenges. We can see what God is doing. And then we can hold on to God. Just like somebody who's on the back of a boat on a jet ski trying to hold on with that rope as the waves and the wake of the boat are moving back and forth. The person on, on the, the, the skis, the water skis, have to hold on. Nosotros también debemos agarrar el lazo del barco as we jump through and hold on as God brings us forward. In the same way, we as the church, somebody say the church. Nosotros como la iglesia, we have to be aware of what God is doing on a big picture. Necesitamos observar lo que Jehová está haciendo en el mundo, in the world. And when we do that, we're able to see and know that no matter what comes our way, no importa lo que viene, nosotros podemos superar cada problema. We can overcome any problem or any situation that we face. If you're going through a financial hardship right now, you have to believe and you have to hope that God is going to bring you through that financial hardship so that you can know that there is a God. Para que sepa que hay un Dios. And that, that God loves you. Este Dios te ama. We're going to take a moment to pray and, 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 and begin our, our message for today. Vamos a empezar con una oración. If you can bow your heads with me right there where you're at. Por favor, inclinen sus rostros mientras orar. Father God, we thank you for today. Gracias, Padre, por... Este día, por las dedicaciones de nuestros hijos, for the dedication of our children, Lord, and for the family, the families that are impacted, por las familias que, que están impactados por esas decisiones de los padres, for the impact that these families will have on the decisions by the, by the parents to dedicate their children. Lord, I pray that you'd open our minds, that you'd open our hearts, and that you'd open our spiritual eyes to see beautiful things in your word today. Father, we pray all this in Jesus' name and the people of God said, and the people of God said, put your hands together, church. Come on, make some noise for our, our heavenly father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. In Exodus chapter 14, We're going to read a passage, and I'd like to entitle the message today, March On. Turn to your neighbor and say, March On. Turn to your other neighbor and, and tell them to march on. Don't mind that you were the second option. You last, you're, you're. Beginning in verse 10, as Pharaoh approached the Israelites... The Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians. Somebody say the Egyptians. And they were marching after the Israelites. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. How many of us sometimes when we're going through life in a battle, we cry out to the Lord? We're terrified of, of what we are about to enter into because we don't know what is in store. A veces no sabemos lo que el Señor tiene para nosotros. So a veces experimentamos temor y clamamos a él. They said to Moses, verse 11, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here into the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Pause there for a moment. Let's reflect. Debemos reflejar un poquito. We need to think about what's going on right here. The people began to lose faith. At the first sign of adversity, 
at the first sign of trouble, a la primer señal de adversidad, ellos olvidaron lo que el Señor hizo para ellos. At the first sign of trouble, they had forgotten that the Lord was delivering them from the hand of the Egyptians, that God was liberating them or freeing them from slavery. They were living in slavery. Eran esclavos. But when they met adversity with Moses, they wanted to go back to slavery. Querían regresar a la esclavitud, a la opresión, a la adicción, a los problemas. Sometimes when God is doing a great work in our life and he is building us up and he's encouraging us and he's telling us to march on, you got to keep going. You got to stay focused on where I am taking you. At the first sign of trouble, we get shaken up and our legs start to tremble and our knees start to, to chatter. Ooh. No, I haven't seen the, the Elvis movie yet, but... I, I'd like to. Uh-huh. I'm all shook up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Hey, you know, Elvis, he grew up in the church. He grew up in an Assemblies of God church just like ours. But praise God, hey, the Egyptians were marching out of Egypt in their freedom. In their freedom, when they faced a trial, they forgot about everything that God was doing that was good. Let's continue. Moses answered the people, verse 13, do not be afraid. Stand firm. Have we ever seen that word stand firm in the Bible before? Yeah, somebody say stand firm. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today, today, hoy en día. El Señor te va a liberar. And you will never see these Egyptians again. When we trust in God, when you have faith in God, when Jesus comes into your life, cuando Cristo entre En tu corazón, cuando Él entra en tu corazón, Él cambia todo. He changes everything. Él cambia nuestra perspectiva. He changes our perspective. The way we see, the way we believe, the way we trust, the way we live, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we behave, the way we respond to trouble. Moses was trying to get the people of Israel to, to know and to recognize that what God was doing with them at that moment was good. And that their hearts need not be troubled, but to stand firm. Amen? Look what he says here in verse 14. Highlight this in your Bible, church. Highlight this. Mark this in your Bible. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. El Señor peleará para ti. The Lord will fight for you. Isn't that encouraging? Isn't that awesome to know that God goes before you? Don't you know that whenever you go through things in life, God wants to make sure you know that he's going to be there for you when life happens. God doesn't promise that we're not going to face trouble. El Señor no nos prometa que no vamos a enfrentar problemas. But his promise is that he will be there for us when we do. When you do, when you get there, he will be there with you. Amen? The Lord will fight for you. Verse 14. And then the Lord said to Moses, verse 15, Why are you crying out to me, by the way? God responds to Moses. Ahora el Señor está respondiendo a Moisés. El líder de la fe. The, the, the leader of faith. Moses. The deliverer. El libertador, the main man, God 
asked Moses, and so why are you crying out to me again? You're already marching. You're already been delivered. You're already out of Egypt. Ya no, no están en las manos de, de Faraón. Ya tienen tu libertad. You have your freedom. You have your liberty. Why are you calling out to me right now? The battle's already won. The fight has already ended. I love when God reminds us and puts us back in our place. A mí me gusta, me gusta cuando el Señor nos regaña un poquito. He challenges us and, you know, pulls us by the ear. Tell the Israelites to move on. Somebody say, move on. Somebody say, march on. You got to march on, people of God. We're coming out of a pandemic. You know, when I grab the mic, it's because I got my point. We're coming out of a pandemic. A two and a half to three year period of time in our lives and the life of the church as well. Here in the United States of America and around the world. Where some of us forgot who we were. Some of us lost sight of what God promised to you way before. When our reality changed, when the situation changed, we adapted to the change, but then we forgot to go back to God's promises. Olvidamos regresar a las promesas del Señor antes de la pandemia because the, the pandemic shook everything up. The, the pandemic made us go to survival mode. Somebody say survival mode. You ever been in a moment in your life where your survival mode is fight or flight, right? Survival mode is your, is your marriage, your, uh, you know, your relationship with some, somebody or something. You guys ever gone through a survival mode where all of a sudden it's like, okay, things are going to change. We have to start doing things differently. Sometimes we make it through. Sometimes God does something different. But we forget to go back to where God called us. We forget to go back to the promises of yesteryear. Recently, I had been reflecting. Recientemente, he pensado en mi llamado. I've been reflecting on God's call upon my life. And I'm just speaking personally for me. And I don't know what God's been speaking to you. But I know when I, when I look back at the promises that God had for me and over my life, I lost, sight of, I lost sight of those promises and that calling a little bit and the things that he has shown me in terms of vision, in terms of dreaming, in terms of hope. Because you get so, so focused on the here and now that your eyes, instead of being out here, sometimes start to come down looking at the potholes in the road. We start looking at the distractions on the, on the, on the right side. Las distracciones aquí en el lado derecha y o la izquierda over here on the left side. And we start focusing so much on just surviving, no más sobrevivir. We have to just, we have to just make it. Let's just make it for today. We have to just make it through today. We just got to get out of this pandemic and then we'll be fine. Well, we're coming out of the pandemic and there's rumors of this and there's wars going on and there's talks of another variant and there's this that and the other and the enemy wants to take you and pull you back and and and, and hold you back and hold you down the enemy wants to hold you down he wants to drown you our 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 thoughts that come from the enemy want to drown you want to hold you down want to render you weak helpless But God's saying, no, remember, tap back in, tap back into the moment when that Holy Spirit touched your life. Conectase con ese momento en tu vida hace 10 años atrás o 20 años o 30 años atrás cuando el Espíritu Santo te tocó. And you knew that there was a God and you knew Jesus was real and he changed your life. But then we forget. Pero olvidamos. When life happens, the troubles come and now all we can do is think about survival and not revival. 
But God wants to bring us back into a time of revival. El Señor quiere que nosotros regresamos a un tiempo de avivamiento. Amén. All the Spanish speakers say amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's, let's see what else. What else? What God's saying right here. Watch this. Verse 16. Somebody say verse 16. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Let me pause there for a moment. Let me remind us. God is telling Moses, why are you crying out to me? Take what you have in your hand and do something about it. <laughs> ¿Por qué me estás clamando? ¿Por qué me estás llamando? Agárrate lo que tienes en tu mano y úsalo. Take what I've placed in your hand and use it. You guys, if you have Jesus in your life, if you have the power of the Holy Spirit, if you have a relationship with Almighty God, the God who dreamt up the universe and placed the stars and the sun in its place and, and allowed us to take pictures of the Milky Way galaxy and all these star constellations that we saw this past week through NASA, then you can realize that you have everything that it takes to overcome your situation, everything to go back to the promises that God made in your life. And maybe for the first time, the Lord is getting your attention and saying, son, I love you and I have great things in store for your life. Oh, my daughter, come here. You are so beautiful. I have great things in store for your life. Oh, hermoso. Oh, hermoso. Oh, como lo amo. Hallelujah. Take the staff that you have in your hand. Somebody say, take the staff. And God's telling Moses, God's talking to Moses. He's talking to each and every one of us. And he's saying, take what I have placed in your hand. Come on, baby. Take what I've already placed in your hand. And stretch it out over the sea. You know what the sea represents, right? You know the saying, you're up against a, the, a rock in a hard place. Well, we're up against... A wet and a wild place. You got nowhere to go. The Israelites had come up against the water, the Red Sea. There's the Suez Gulf. And there's the, the Gulf of Aqaba. And there are the, the little pointy ears at the top of the Red Sea. There in Egypt. That come down near the Sinai Peninsula where Israel is here. Egypt is down here in part of North Africa. The Israelites had marched out of Egypt and out of Egypt and wanted to make their way up to Israel. And in their marching, it took several days. This is by like day 25. Their backs are up against the water. And then God, the Bible says, Pharaoh's heart changed and said, I changed my mind about letting the Israelites go. Two million, two million slaves, two million people that were part of a free workforce. And on the backs of the Israelites, they built all the pyramids in this massive, massive, one of the greatest civilizations that ever was on the backs of the Isra Israelite slaves. They're marching and they're going and they're moving. They come up against the water. And they said, oh, here we are now. And then they see the Egyptians coming back after them after Pharaoh changed his mind. Go back after them. Go get them and bring them back. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, wait, I forgot the 10 plagues. That's right. But never mind the 10 plagues. My son's already dead. What do I have to lose? Go after them now. And there's a dust cloud coming in the distance. And the chariot of Pharaoh and all the rest of his army are starting to press up against the Israelites. Men and women, young and old. And all of their livestock and all the booty that they took from Egypt, the gold and silver that the Egyptians had given to them. They're there. They're crying out to God. Moses goes to God and God says, take what I've placed in your hand and stretch it out over the waters. People of God, there's going to come times in our life, either right now or in the near future, when you're going to be discouraged. 
You're going to consider going back to the old way of life. You're going to consider going back to stinking thinking. You're going to consider going back to a more comfortable way of life because the life of faith seems to be a little bit more difficult than to just go and do whatever you want and not allow the conscious and the, the Holy Spirit to sear and to make his impression upon our hearts. But choose the better way. Choose the harder way. Choose to move your eyes towards the direction of the water and say, God, what would you have me do? God said, stretch out your hand and your staff over the waters and I will part the waters and create dry ground. What does that mean for us? It means that God is with you in the situation. It means that when you step out in faith, and when you invite God to be a part of a problem that's bigger than you, it means that you are now recognizing the big dog. You're recognizing the big dog and everything that he has and everything that he's given to you. And that's where faith comes in. Because faith is when we involve God in the matters and situations that we can't handle. And I'm not saying don't involve God in the, also the smaller, menial minutia of life. I'm, Involve God in everything. Just don't forget that God is there to bring you through the hardest of situations. You know, one of the things I've heard as a pastor, oh, pastor, I feel so bad. Why? Oh, because when things are going good, I stopped going to church. I, I let my relationship with the Lord go. And, and you know, I, you know what I'm going through right now. And now I'm coming back to church. And, and now I'm, you know, I'm praying again because now I'm asking God to help me. I'm like, hey, praise God. I'm not your judge. That's between you and him. What God is happy, though, is that you're pressing back into your relationship with him. What I'm happy about is that you're realizing what he has placed in your hand, and that is your relationship with him. And that's access to all the resources of heaven at the point of your need. How many of you, if you're a parent, raise your hand if you're a parent. How many of you, if your child was ever going through a very difficult time in their life, no matter if they got themselves in that situation or not, when they come and say, Dad, can we go grab a burger? Sure, me home. What do you need? <laughs> oh, I'm going through this. Okay, let's figure it out. Let's pray about it. Let's see what we can do. Let's, let's walk with you through this. We're here to support you. We ain't going to tell you what to do, but we're going to support you any way that we can. As parents, that's what we're there for, right? And that's how God is. Sometimes we think God is a just a, a angry God. Pensamos que Dios es un Dios que está enojado con nosotros y, y quiere martillarnos. He just wants to slam us with a big hammer when we mess up. That's not how God is. Dios no es así. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a patient God. He knows things before they even happen to us. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. And he's all-powerful. And he can help us through any situation that we're going through. The Israelites were going through a difficult time, and it was one of the first tests that they were coming up against. Beside asking God for food and water when they needed it. There's going to be times in, in our lives when these tests, these tribulations can become temptations for us to wander spiritually. Las tribulaciones que enfrentamos a veces son tentaciones para nosotros de dejar la fe, to leave the faith and figure it out ourselves because we control everything. We want to manage things and know that everything is going to be okay. And that's when God breaks us down. That's when God humbles us and reminds us that he is almighty God. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Nobody can wield their power, their control, their authority over the people of God. God is in control. God is sovereign. Anything that you experience in life is because God allowed it. Let's not forget that. Anything that we go through, God allowed it. He permitted it for us. Because he develops our character and our faith. He strengthens our faith and our walk with him when we hold on to him fearlessly 
When we hold on to Jesus, when we hold on to God in the middle of our problems, he brings us through our situation if we choose to hold on to him. And when we get on the other side of the Red Sea and have passed through that situation on dry ground, might have been, it might have been tough. It might have been dry ground that season. It might have, it might have been a time when you feel like God's not answering your prayers. It may, have, it may have been a time when you, you're walking through the dry ground and saying, but I don't hear God, I don't feel God, but you got to recognize that God was, God was the one who allowed you to make it through that storm. God was, allowed, was the one who allowed you to walk through the water on dry ground. And that means to get to the other side. I'm reminded of a word of encouragement that Someone close to me this past week shared with me. One of my good friends is going through a really, really tough time in his life. And I called his dad. I called his brother. I said, hey, how's our boy? He's not doing too good. He said, but you know what, Josh? It's just like Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He says, you know, when you get to that part in the scripture where it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I said, yeah. He says, sometimes we focus too much on the valley and on the shadow of death. And we don't realize that if there's a shadow, that means that there's light. For, for there to be a shadow, there's got to be light. You're going through that valley in life. Whatever that struggle is, don't forget that the light is with you. And you carry the light. And he's going to bring you through that time. You just got to hold on. You got to march on. You keep trusting and praying for your children to come back to the Lord. You keep marching on and you don't stop. Things didn't go the way you wanted them to go in that relationship. You keep marching on. You don't, let, you don't let go of God. You march on and you trust and you pray. And the Lord's going to bring you through that storm. Verse 19. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. Come on, y'all. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. Coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel through the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. Somebody say dry ground. And with the wall of water on the right and on the left. The Egyptians pursued them and all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, now stretch your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and your, their chariots and their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it. And the Lord swept them into the sea and the water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. And the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea had drowned and not one of them survived. The Lord is reminding us that when he's got you in that place where you're building momentum and you're picking up steam and you're on fire for the Lord or you're you're tested after a season, a honeymoon season with Christ, you're tested with a true a true trial, a true problem. He says, march on. 
We're coming out of the pandemic. And God is moving here in Mission Ebenezer and he's moving in your life. There's going to there's gonna be a test that you're going to have to go through. And God is going to remind you to not let go, but to march on. To be faithful to God. You don't know what faithfulness looks like. You don't know what it means to, to walk with God or to, to walk through the, the, Red, the Red Sea on dry ground, trusting that God's going to hold up the waters to your right and to your left. Just look to those that God has placed in your life that are doing it, and they're going to show you what it looks like. Look to God and invite his son, Jesus Christ, to come into your life. Resist the temptation to go back spiritually, mentally, physically to a place that you don't belong anymore. For God has a better plan, a wonderful future. And hope for you and for everything that he's placed in your hand. Please stand. Thank you, Dacron, for accompanying me on the keyboard. You guys, the Lord has work for us to do. He's breaking us out of our comfort zones, complacency. Here at church, the Lord has given me a, a motto, no excuses, no procrastination. No excuses, no procrastination. Here at this place, you're not going to find a people that are scared, that are weak in their faith. You're going to find a people that have been steady by the hand of the Lord because we serve a mighty God trusting in God and everything that he is doing in the world I want to be a part of that and I don't want to miss it we'd like to invite you to be a part of God's work that he is doing in the world it starts with allowing him to do a work in your life if you're here today and you'd like to invite Jesus to come into your life you'd like to give God a chance would you just slip your hand right up right, right there where you are and God knows who you are. God knows what he's doing in your heart. God knows what he's doing in your life. And he wants to become the center of everything that you do. He wants to remind you that you don't have to fear. You're not alone. But he's with you. No matter what is coming after you from behind, and no matter what you face in front of you, God is with you. <laughs>